Hey folks, here's a quick video. I'm trying to keep it short because my upload speeds are so slow that I've been resorting to 360 and 480. I know some of you think that's old school days, but rural Vermont, rural United States, that's how it is. Scandinavia, they're laying um, fiber to people, but we're not quite that modern or probably ever will be here. So um, yeah, this is backup power. People have been asking about that. Um, over the years, I've never really made any video on it, and BioLite just sent me a, a stove to check out their base camp, this one in the middle here, and so I was having that going, and then I was also lighting my old BioLite camp stove, which I had had for many years since I gave to their Kickstarter, probably six years ago or more, and that's uh, I've just got some wet wood chips there, so that's why it's smoking so much. But um, testing them all out and doing the kind of yearly by yearly checkup of all my backup power or most of it um the only other part of backup electricity i have that's not really in these videos is a generator or two and a um a few deep cycle batteries which can be charged by a solar panel and by they can stay trickle charged by being just on the grid and plugged in with a, a trolling motor charger and uh, they could also be topped off from um, a vehicle. I could bring them to my car and charge them, or I can um, run the generator. So there's kind of a lot of different small power supplies here. The generator is a big one, um, and that can run kind of the house grid to charge batteries via this traditional charger here. But then I also have just a very small solar watt uh, solar panel here we can charge storage like this this is this urban beats thing it's not a very good one i'd try to find a better one i can make power from the two bio lights and charge batteries and the crucial needs are simply light there's three sources of light here triple a and these are cr one two threes these run off this is stream lights these two which i highly recommend this is super bright um and it runs on two cr one two threes and you can get chargeables for those. Those are Tenergies, which charge really well. I can also ch I can charge those in here, which has a USB hookup, so I could hook it to any of these BioLights plus the solar panel, or I could also put them in, I have a water supply here. This is part of backup power and water combined. There's a small solar panel on these um, SteriPens. This is the SteriPen Adventure. That runs on these two CR123s, and I can put these two in here and also charge them. Now it might take like a day, but that's fine. Um, there's three to five sources of backup in just in this situation, both solar and wood. Uh, and so they both can be found on site very easily. Um, and then to back all of this up, you could say there's also a generator source and large solar panel source as well. So this is just a very kind of micro uh, power production system, but it's crucial because water and light is really what you need the most. The only other um, crucial needs besides being met here are potentially, you could say, communications like running, um, uh, powering a radio, which I have like a, um, you know, UHF uh, weather radio. I have two different ones runs on its own solar panel and can take these batteries and one can be plugged into the grid um, and also has backup battery on it a battery on it so I can get information about the outside world and then also with the deep cycle batteries I can easily run a modem uh, which for us the DSL is almost always up when the grids down the phone lines so that's really all there is to very basic backup power this is very inexpensive I mean you could pare this down even further um, we're not looking to back up our refrigerator or well pump we're lucky to have water on site and I can boil water, I can purify water here, I can collect rainwater if needed, and I can also collect surface water and just sterilize it with the SteriPen. So there's three water um, getting strategies here, which is key because you have to have water. Once your heat needs are met, that's next after water, we've got plenty of heat that's non-perishable, not going bad here, and a wood stove that doesn't take electricity at all. The best thing, of course, is to not need electricity. Second best thing is to provide at crucial loads very easily um, and redundantly and durably. And that's what's um, happening here. I'd recommend these end loops. Stephen Harris turned me on to them. 
their the their triple A's and and uh, double A's. Uh, store them well so they don't short out. I have a couple backup lithium batteries which just stay for a long time and can run these two really powerful lights on them if you had to go somewhere and have and just not be able to charge because um, they're going to last a very very long time. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. These BioLights, by the way, are really cool. They don't make tons of power. To charge my phone if I'm not using it all, I feel like this base camp, I'm just testing it now, this morning, but it probably would take a few hours to charge fully, maybe even longer. It's basically gonna keep up with your use, like I'm at like 53% or something, and it's staying about that while I'm using the phone. It's even dropping a little, and this is gonna make more than the camp stove, the base camp. So, I mean, they're minimal power, but they also take minimal resources. I mean, you feed this thing, like mulch, <laughs> this stuff in the sun around mulch rings on trees. This can get scraps from the wood, sh from the wood shop um, or pieces of wood that you cut with a saw. Um, but this honestly makes, you know, even way more power um, than this, but you can cook on this and obviously have a lot of other needs met very reliably, very durably from on-site resources.